Hey everyone, John Velasco for Phone Arena again. I just got my hands on the Sony Xperia Play smartphone for Verizon Wireless. It's available already, uh, $200 on contract. You pick it up in stores or even online. Um, it's actually the first PlayStation certified uh, smartphone here in the U.S. So you can play a bunch of different uh, PlayStation games with the handset. We reviewed this unit not too long ago, the GSM version of it. So we'll just do a quick unbox and show you the uh, contents and of course a little bit about the handset. Packaging goes is pretty much straightforward Verizon. You got the Rule the Air logo right there, Sony Ericsson branding at the bottom. You can tell right there on top, PlayStation certified. Nothing much else really out of the ordinary. No specs whatsoever on the packaging and the contents are just shown in the back. So let's open it up, take a look at the handset. So here's the Xperia Play. We, the version that we reviewed was the uh, white version. This just uh, looks like a piano black version. So we'll take a look at the hardware in a moment. Let's just power it on, put in the battery. So here's the battery. It's a 1500 milliamp hour battery right there. So in opening up the handset, you gotta just remove the bottom cover here. It's plastic. So it comes off, just snaps on like that. It's kind of flimsy, you can tell here. And just put in the battery, just like so. Snap it in. You have access to also the micro SD card slot, but you have to again remove the back cover in order to do that. So let's snap this guy in, and let's just power it on, and while it's uh, booting up, we'll just go look at the uh, other contents with the device. So underneath all this, looks like a usual set of accessories. Wall charger, USB cable plugs in there, plug it to the wall, charges. Comes with a pretty, looks like a pretty long micro USB cable. And interestingly enough, it does come with a three, it's like a three and a half millimeter headset adapter. It says right here, for use with non-Sony Ericsson, uh, Sony Ericsson headset. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh, why why it's going to be coming with this. It looks like a standard 3.5mm headset jack already in here. Just plug it in at the bottom. Doesn't seem like a two, it could be a little bit smaller. So that's probably why it comes with it. And finally, you have a visual set of documentation, of course important consumer information, uh, some more information, product safety and warranty information, and also like a, your, your quick start guide here. So nothing really out of the ordinary with its packaging. So now let's take a closer look at the handset and as we said we already reviewed the handset uh, not too long ago, the GSM version of it. Uh, this is made to work with uh, Verizon's network. 3G only, so uh, don't expect any fast speeds uh, compared to some of the LTE devices out there. So the first thing that is uh, specific with this device that we see different is the fact that it offers the uh, stock Android 2.3 gingerbread experience. The one with the uh, GSM version has all the different customizations that Sony Ericsson put places on there, just like Timescape. But as we notice here, if we go to the widgets, um, it doesn't really have all those other fancy looking ones. So depending on your liking, it may be a good thing or a bad thing, but you can tell it's pretty much straightforward Android 2.3 gingerbread. Uh, if you go up to the uh, app launcher, typical formation, grid-like format, uh, just like we see with the uh, the uh, the uh, Nexus S here. So let's uh, take a look at the hardware tour. So it looks like your headset jack right there, your micro USB cable, micro USB port uh, for data and power connection. You have physical buttons lining the bottom instead of capacitive ones. And let's take a look on, t on the right side. It looks like you have your volume rocker right here. And you also have the uh, shoulder buttons for the games, left and right shoulder buttons. In the bottom, you just have looks like just the access to your uh, to the, uh, the the notch to uh, remove the back cover. And on top, dedicated power button. Finally, in the back, you can see the uh, five megapixel autofocus camera, single LED flash, definitely glossy handset, some chrome trim accents. And the unique thing about it is, of course, when you open it up, it gives you. It's not often you see this. But it gives you a gamepad, uh, something you don't find tend to see with most smartphones. It's definitely its bigger, biggest uh, noticeable fa uh, feature on here. So the game controls are pretty nice. You know, it's a uh, race, definitely. You have your touch sensitive analog sticks. You have your select and start button, the menu button right here. It definitely comes to play when you're playing games. It definitely makes it a lot more easy to handle. So up front, you have a 4-inch display. It's actually... Uh, 
uh, 480 by 854 pixels, so definitely sharp looking. Nice details tell you just by looking at it here. Good color, color production as well. 16.7 million color support. And I believe 16 gigabytes of internal storage on there. So it's pretty, more than adequate. And on top of that, it does have a front-facing camera, interestingly enough, for a 3G device. Not too often we see that. Uh, we saw already the Droid Incredible 2 offering it, but the uh, Droid X2 does not. So you still could do a... Uh, so you can still do uh, video chat with the handset. So again, if you want to learn more about this handset, we already checked out the uh, the European version GSM-1. You can read our review on that at our website, phonerena.com.